Tegna, it's Loria again. Uh, we have a fantastic video for you today. We got another one. Um, ferret for a customer this time, so it's not ours. That one is ours. Uh, so yeah, pretty much a barn find. Um, it's been sitting in his shed for a number of years. We do not know any of the history about it. Um, as we've been pulling it apart, we found couple of little numbers and what have you so we're gonna do we're gonna clean it up and then oil it up water it up check everything and then we'll do a will it stop let's see how we go Okay, so it is day two. So I pressure washed the ferret yesterday and uh, we've let it dry and I've also done the engine bay. So yeah, I'm gonna do a quick little run through of how it is right now before we've actually done anything besides cleaning it. Uh, and yeah, see what needs doing and what we can do. Let's get into it. Here's the little monstrosity. So for those who don't know, this is a Ferret Mark II. Uh, it is more or less the same chassis as what we've got. Um, should, probably should explain that ours is also technically a Mark II. Uh, the easiest way that I've been told is the shape of these little wing doors. The original Mark I's had square ones, but Mark II's have this. Although, um, I guess in layman's terms, Mark 1s don't have a turret, Mark 2s have a turret. Um, we call ours a Mark 1 because it doesn't have a turret and never had a turret. Or rather, it was made to have a turret but it was never fitted with a turret. So ours is a Mark 2, Mark 1, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this is a proper Mark 2. We have still no idea on the history of this one, other than it's been uh, in far north Queensland for at least 15 years. Don't know much more beyond that. Uh, we are still waiting to hear back on that. If anyone does know uh, this particular vehicle, can tell us why that marking was under the uh, the rear lights let us know that'll be really interesting likewise we found this so this is a floor plate uh, for the driver's position and on the underside someone has very graciously carved into it now there's a few little bits up here I haven't been able to quite work them all out but this one um yeah we've got we've got a number uh we've got a date which looks like 10th of the 10th 61 we've got a name so if that's you let me know <laughs> or if you know who that is uh let me know uh and you can probably tell us a lot more about the history of this vehicle than uh, we could otherwise find out we know it was a bandiana because they've written bandiana. For those who don't know, bandiana is an Australian military base um, located at like the New South Wales Victorian border, uh, and it's that's a workshop, what WKSBS workshops. Um, yeah, can't quite make out the rest of it, uh, but yeah, presumably this is whoever did work on it at the uh, Bandiana workshops in 1961, which is really cool. So if we do find whoever that was, we can probably find out um, a bit more about this. I haven't jumped on the internet or anything yet. Uh, we've literally just cleaned it, let it dry, and gone about as far as that. The paint is obviously faded in a few spots and we've got a bit of overspray from other stuff too which is all of that sort of stuff there 
that can come off with a bit of elbow grease but we will probably give it another paint just to uniform um, unify the, the entire vehicle uh, plus we're actually losing a lot of the paint at the back here we've got the um, original British green underneath the Australian green so a bit of heritage for you um, yeah on the good news front uh, we've still got the original plates on the inside turn the light on uh, it is absolutely filthy in here the current plan uh, there's the plate by the way uh, the current plan is to unbolt uh, the roof uh, so we can take everything off and I'll just stand up there and um, pressure wash all of these internals it really doesn't hurt vehicles like this to hit them with a good bit of water as long as you're careful really um, they are designed to get wet um, these are a waterproofed um, system which I'll show in the engine bay um, but yeah so we've got the original data plate up there and all the mod plates which is really cool too it's in pretty good condition we've got a few birds nest wires sitting over there which is not great um, it does steer I had to steer it a little bit to get it onto the truck um, and that went off went quite easily the brakes haven't rusted on too which is also another good thing and it rolls quite happily which is good the radio has obviously been taken out but it still retains a lot of the um, original boxes and data plates and all that sort of stuff we've got batteries for it already uh, so we can crank it over pretty well after I've cleaned everything up the seat is also in pretty good condition um, the backrest not so much that needs a bit of bit of work but the uh, actual cushion itself that's in really good nick it's just uh really really dusty so yeah no doubt once i clean it all up i can jump in and show what everything does uh, but for now i really don't want to go in there <laughs> just at this stage okay back on the outside it did come with a spare wheel it came with everything uh we just took it off so we could actually access it um yeah yesterday i also pressure washed the engine the owner took off the carburetor some time ago so we're gonna have to run a carby kit through that remake it and put it back on and then we can do a will it will it run um but it's actually not that bad even the um oil it's brand new that's really good so we're not at all worried oh, and there's no water in it too which which is fantastic um so yeah that's really good so far a few of the pipes down here have been disconnected so i'll have to go and do that but everything else is looking pretty good as i was mentioning before these engines are pretty solid um, these are proper aircraft style spark plugs uh, so they're all waterproofed all of these it's really good so no it doesn't hurt these when you hit them with a hose or pressure washer just got to make sure that it doesn't get into the um, the fuel tank the carburetor um, opening which is why there's a rag there or the um, air filters everything else is pretty well good you just got to be careful with how you're doing it all but um no, a bit of degreaser um which took off a lot of the uh top coat of paint but still left everything nice underneath um yeah it's good someone has been at it this is obviously not factory military style wiring and this bird's nest of wires i am pretty sure is not factory or at the very least it shouldn't 
all be shoved in here. Um, but no, it's can't really argue with that as a uh, as a starting point. We've just got to um, do our due diligence. So the plan is to road register this on club plates for the owner to drive around uh, when when it's all done. When we inquired about why he needs work done on it, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Quite a few years ago, uh, the brakes just stopped working. Fortunately, we have done these all in the past before, so we're gonna have to redo all of the brake linings, probably, um, all of the brake hose, check it all, make sure it can actually stop. Um, we'll run through the engine, tune it, make it all great. He did also mention that the fuel tank, which is that big bit there, uh, he mentioned the fuel tank wasn't working or it was blocked or something. We haven't looked. Um, it does look what well, we've looked in through the top and it looks a little, how do you do? Um, but absolutely fixable, we think. But we are gonna have to have a look. We don't wanna pull it out because to pull it out, you've gotta pull the gearbox out or the engine out. Um, we'll do a bit of tomfoolery with that. We don't particularly wanna do that. So we'll uh, we'll try and flush it, have a look at it. It could just be a blockage. Um, but yeah, he basically ran it with um, with that little bit of hose there, <laughs> which yeah, if it works, it works. But for driving this on the road, that will not suffice. So yeah. yeah and then if he uh, wants it painted, we can paint it. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, hope you like this one. We've got maybe a few more projects coming in, but yeah, we we really got our <laughs> hands full as it is. Uh, that's two ferrets and two brain gun carriers and a 25 pounder trailer all to do work on. So yeah, we're going to be busy, busy bees. So yeah, if you have any questions or any information that you can gleam on as to the history of this vehicle before I go and do some Googling, um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you on the next one.